So for the last three years, I've taught a high school level game design course where we focus mostly on getting the kids excited about game design, creating their own games, and really just the creative side of the whole thing more than the technical aspects. As a result, we've been using Playmaker as our primary coding and uh, programming tool and environment. And it's been fantastic. I have yet to see anything where students can learn so quickly and get stuff up and running quickly. Always impresses them with a few minutes dragging in a few actions they have interactivity and their game is working and that's been awesome where the rub has come in is that when they start to create more complex games playmaker gets a little bit more difficult to use so this year I'm making the switch to bolt now I was a little skeptical because bolt is just another visual scripting visual coding environment and I've seen those they're all kind of the same they take a lot of time but once I got my hands on Bolt, I was pretty impressed. It's different. It really is. It's different. It feels great to use. It's almost fun to use. So let's go over some pros and cons of Playmaker and Bolt. I want to be really clear. I don't think Playmaker is a bad program or a bad environment. I just think Bolt offers some things that Playmaker doesn't. And those are things that my students are looking for and can make use of. So if we look through some pros and cons of Playmaker, the big one for uh, the big pro for Playmaker is very clearly it's easy to learn, easy to use. Like I said before, I don't think there's anything easier to learn and get started with. There's lots of online support and several tutorial series out there to get you, get you going. Um, the other big, big pro is the ecosystem browser, which gives access to community created actions, which allows Playmaker to stay relevant to, as Unity uh, grows. And it also allows the community to create actions that are useful and, and share them. It's a fantastic asset. The cons to Playmaker are that when the code gets complex, Playmaker slows down. It, it takes a long time to create a complex FSM. Uh, in particular, if you want to manipulate a variable, if you're wanting to do arithmetic, say with a vector three, and you want to manipulate one of the components, it gets pretty tedious, if I'm honest. It gets a little tedious to drag in all the actions, and some of the actions aren't real clear. Uh, overall, it requires a lot of clicks, if you will. And if you're going to spend a lot of time in an environment, you want to generally minimize the number of clicks and smooth everything out. The other piece that uh, I think is uh, a con for Playmaker is that creating new actions requires coding in C Sharp. Now, maybe that seems obvious. Of course, that's what's going to be required. But Playmaker for my students was a way to stay away from C Sharp. And now when they need to do something particular with Playmaker, they can either create a really big FSM or we can create a new action in C Sharp and maybe 10 or 20 lines of code. And so it, it's a little self-defeating there. Let's move on to Bolt. Let's talk about Bolt. The pros to Bolt. Um, first off, they have this idea of super units. And units is what uh, Bolt calls the actions or the commands. Their units are the equivalent of, of actions. Um, and these super units effectively allow custom units, meaning that you as a uh, programmer can build up this super unit and it becomes this single chunk of code that you can drop into your other uh, or your future flow graphs and it's reusable. You can have custom inputs and outputs um, and effectively allows coders and programmers to create custom units. The other piece that allows that is that Bolt is using reflection to create a huge library of units. And I, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but I think I saw it was something like 20,000 different units. So 20,000 different actions that Bolt can use and all those can be recombined to create custom units. Bolt uh, allows flow graphs, which is what they first started with, and that's the more typical code um, creating individual actions. And they also have recently added state graphs to uh, kind of mimic the idea of Playmaker's finite state machines and, and really allow when you have a, a code that needs to be in particular states, you can now have a state graph and inside each of those states are additional flow graphs. The other big pro for me with Bolt is that it uses similar language and terms to C Sharp. And this is huge for me. I'm trying to teach students how to create games. And eventually, if they keep going with this, they're going to need to know C Sharp. And in the process of using Bolt, they're learning the same terminology. They're seeing the same terms. And with Bolt, you can either choose human language or 
programmer language, and programmer language is very, very similar to C-sharp. And I see Bolt as a potential bridge between uh, an area where you have no coding or programming experience and learning C-sharp. And so I think that's pretty, pretty impressive and pretty significant aspect to Bolt. The other piece that really won me over, and this is what won me over the most, is the UI is really intuitive and quick to create with. And this is just because when you drag from um, one input or output, you drag over and let go, it pops up the fuzzy finder and you select the next node. Unlike with Playmaker where you'd have to go in and create a new state, then you have to go into that state and add actions to it, which works really well, it's intuitive, but it requires a lot of clicks. And with Bolt, it's really quick to add uh, unit after unit after unit and build up a large flow graph. And to me, that's, again, is what won me over. That's gonna allow my students to create more complex games. It's gonna allow them to create code more quickly that is more complex and um, is a little bit more transparent as to what's going on. Let's look at the cons of Bolt. And for me, the big one here is the steeper learning curve. There is no doubt that Bolt is a little bit harder to get going. It's a little bit harder to get interactivity, to get something moving in your Unity project than it is with Playmaker. There's no doubt. The Bolt online community is definitely smaller than that for Playmaker. There's fewer forums, it's a less active, and that's just because it's newer. There's a fairly active Discord server, uh, which is a great thing for Bolt to have around. And along with that, because Bolt is newer, and a little less popular at the moment, I hope that changes, is there's fewer tutorials than there are for Playmaker. There's just not as much out there yet. Um, people are just getting their hands on it, they're just beginning to work with it. And so, yeah, there's gonna be a few more bumps in the road. Now this is a little speculative, but uh, I'm, I'm hopeful. And on the Discord server, the Bolt folk were suggesting that they're pursuing a path that would allow Bolt to generate C-sharp code from your flow graph. And if that happens, that would be amazing. That would be fantastic. Um, I would imagine that a human could probably type up better code, but being able to go from a flow graph to C-sharp code would be a game changer as far as I'm concerned. So if you take all the pros and cons together, I think it's pretty clear why I'm making the switch from Playmaker to Bolt for my class. And again, I wanna make it clear, I don't think Playmaker is a bad program. I just think that Bolt is gonna help take my students to the next level and it's gonna help them get there a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. Thanks for joining. Hope you found that interesting. Please join me for the rest of the series. I'll be building up a series of tutorials to support my game design course, as well as adding other tutorials uh, based on requests from the YouTube community. Hope to see you next time.